Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us for another look at the headlines making the rounds in our newspapers. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm joined today uh, by Libora Soshoma in the studio, legal practitioner. A pleasure to have you. My pleasure. And of course, we have Aisha Sori joining us all the way from Berlin, a public affairs analyst. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us as well. All right, we'll start with the Punch newspaper. And the big one here is seized properties cannot by top EFCC officials, Magus friends. That's according to a panel. You find details on page two. We've been having that conversation. Um, looking forward to the new perspective that will be brought in by our guests. Um, it has um, two writers. Send, says suspended commission boss failed to account for 332 recovered houses. All allegations are lies concocted to tarnish Magus' image, says Cancel. Okay, um, let's take a look at um, the picture reports. There is a collapsed bridge uh, somewhere in Ogun State, as you can see. Uh, Lagos doctors begin strike over wage disparity. Others commences today. I think it's about for about three days. And then fraudster detains American lady in Lagos Hotel. The frauds are of 18.5 million naira. And that story has been trending for a bit, not a good one for us. Uh, federal government commends air peace as UK denies airline landing permits. Okay, uh, there are more. Uh, we have the NDDC issue captured there. Uh, reps probe 70 billion naira payments to non-performing 1,700 contractors. APC expels Ondo anti-impeachment lawmaker for anti-party activities. And then uh, we have uh, wanted debate on one million boys leader feared killed in cult war. There are more headlines, but let's um, get uh, some perspective on some of these uh, headlines. We will start with uh, Aisha. Aisha, I, I, I think we should start with the one that's looking at us on the screen now. Seized properties cannot by top EFCC officials. Um, the council to Magri saying that all of these are false allegations and, uh, of course, disparity in number of properties recovered. Uh, thank you, Amaka. It's Felicity. In this story, I mean, the legation and counter-legation from in the... Can you hear me? Uh, the, it's, the line is actually pretty bad. Um, let's try one more time. Your reaction to that headline? I was saying there's a lot to unpack here. Okay. And it's hard to know where to begin. Okay, we're really having me, issues. I, can... um, I, I shall just, just hold on a bit. We'll come back to you. Uh, hopefully by then uh, the network will be a bit better. Uh, but let's uh, come to uh, Barista Liboros or Shoma. Um, which of these headlines would you want to take on? Yeah, um, same, same cis properties cornered by top um, EFCC officials. Um, I, I, I think with um, the revelation that is coming from um, this panel investigation, there is need for um, the government not to be carried away. And then also there is absolute you know, need now to, for the government to also extend the scope of the panel's uh, investigation to both the ICPC and the Office of the Attorney General because there have been allegations and counter allegations. And so if we are to talk about recovered loot being relooted, you also have the ICPC that is also, you know, um, anti-graft agency. And if Magu, that is known to be, seen to be above board, can be this neck deep in this, there's need for government also to expand the scope of this panel to include the ICPC and the Office of the Attorney General. Why? Because the Office of the Attorney General also had been, the allegations also that he, 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 that, um, he had also cornered some um, um, cases and then also compromised on them. And then also he had granted approvals, you know, fraudulent approvals to people who are standing corruption. Right. So there is need for us to actually, if we indeed want to clean the urgent table, so that it doesn't look as if, you know, you're, being, uh, you're doing this because there is um, 
um, there, there are misunderstandings between the office of the Attorney General and MAGU for ins or ins subordination, like I said earlier, okay. subordination, you know, no particulars. So there's right. need for us to actually go the OHOG. Let, let's try Aisha again and see if the connection will be better. Aisha, um, are you still with us? I am. Is this better? Uh, let's hope it is. Uh, go ahead. Um, you were trying to say something. Yeah, I was saying that from get back to how we never know how to count. Is it better? Uh, go ahead. Let, let's let's see what happens. Go ahead. At least we've heard you so far. So, okay. So how can they propensity the number of properties or that miss? I mean, what is our account here? I mean, we have to ask ourselves this question. If he is get by somebody yet has set up the very opaque decision, where even internally there are don't have to can say oh, there's X amount of property missing, Y amount of properties missing for concern. That's one. I'm not sure about this committee that will set up. All right, um, Aisha, I am so, so sorry. Um, we really can't really um, piece together effectively what you are saying. We'll still try again. Maybe we will um, cut the connection and reconnect while we talk with uh, Laboros in the studio. Uh, back to you, sir. Um, Let's look at the fact that Lagos doctors are going on a three-day strike starting today. And they are saying it's over wage disparity. What's your take? Yeah, um, but, but, but quickly, before I go to that, let me also, like um, the point I, Aisha was trying to raise, also the fact that you cannot concentrate all such powers in one hand or one agency and not create a super, you know, human. Asset management should be different from asset recovery agency. When you do that, you, you know, you, you separate these powers and so there won't be abuse and then you can have the man focus you know, on investigation, why you you know someone else you don't compromise charge. your investigation. Someone else you can investigate someone else for not properly managing asset. That said, it is also very sad that with all the hype about you know extra allowance, hazard allowances, and uh, um, uh, the fact that we need extra hand at this time, that this is the time that doctors, the government that had prided itself as you know responding primarily to the crisis that we have, they are still not able to put their acts together to ensure that the, you know, our frontline medical personnel are paid their due wages. It's, it's quite unfortunate. This is not the time you want to hear of, of even warning strike. This should be the time where we would, should be able to, where we should be saying thank you to all of these uh, medical personnel, whether those responding to COVID or not, because even to attend to uh, we are so overwhelmed now that even the normal hospitals, you know, find it difficult attending to the everyday patient. So this is not the time you want to, you know, have that at all. So whatever it is, government should take every possible step necessary to ensure that this does not happen. All right, France detains American lady. This is the, like the second one in the space of about a month. I think the last one was, um, I don't know if it's in Lagos or Enugu State, that we also had um, a, a lady rescued by the police was being detained after coming on a love scam uh, to Nigeria and have their uh, bank accounts uh, emptied. Claire. I mean, how worrying is this really? It's, um, it's, it's very, very worrying very worrisome and also there's need for us as a country to take this seriously because the image no matter what you, you see why government officials are busy fleecing the country you know public fund you also and then the image we paint you know the impression we give in Nigeria is that of you know anything goes and so you have private individuals also you know finding opportunity to ensure that um, you know, they make money through dubious and illegal ways. And when we do not take time to actually punish these offenders, it becomes the image of the country. It's already the image of the country that is so bad now that in some countries, you know, they say vacancy, they are, are, are apply, they, they, they um, advertise for vacancy and then they exclude Nigerians. You know, it is so v bad that in some countries, you know, they run at Victoria consistently, warning their nationals of, you know, Nigerian men. 
that the country needs to do, you know, something about this. There need to be consequences for every action, good or bad. Well, what, but, what, but how, how can we help that? Because basically what we have now mostly is an announcement that this person has been arrested. Um, often the, 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 you can see that in, in, a, in a matter of four weeks, um, it's become faint in my mind. The other case of um, uh, an American citizen or uh, a foreign national that was also um, allegedly yes. held hostage. We don't have an update on that. And then we have this. We're outraged as usual. But what is the follow-up? Whose responsibility is it to ensure look at, that look, there is accountability at the end of the day? Look at um, Hush Poppy, for example, the way he was arrested. And uh, there were no debates about it. He immediately extradited to the United States for, to face charges. Here, you arrest a criminal, and then we bring the God factor into it. Because also, government, you know, the government agencies are not, you know, serious. Because there, there is no proper supervision. There is no proper monitoring and enforcement of rules. The police will compromise. And they tell you, oh, there is hunger. If you steal 100 million from somebody, it means you have the brain. So how much do I get from it? And then you, you pay to... To, to, to be granted bail. And so once that happens, it becomes easy, you know, for the, those people who are watching to see that, look, this is a lucrative business, you, know, you can actually do it, and there will be no consequences. Right. And so that's why these are ways it is encouraged. But if the government is truly sincere, the first thing you do is to ensure that you overhaul and strengthen your policing so that you don't need anybody's body language to to require the police to do their job. The moment these crimes are committed, there is a department that will sw swing into action and not only arrest, ensure that prosecution. And then given the same publicity, but that's not the case here. Uh, let's hope we can reconnect with Aisha Sorry, um, in the course of this conversation. Uh, but for now, uh, we go to the Nation newspaper and see what m is making uh, the headline. Why US, UK, others are monitoring Magus Pro? That's on the Nation newspaper. It has uh, two, uh, three writers actually. Uh, the first one is concern about allegation pro process, fair hearing, anti graft campaign. And then uh, 550 billion naira recovered fund in TSA, says EFCC boss. And then Malami defends crude oil sales. That's another one for you. Uh, on the front page of the Nation newspaper. And just beneath that, more dust in Ondo over Deputy Governor Ajayi. A couple of riders to it. Home APC local government ask him to quit government. And then we have APC Hears Appeal. House rejects call for Speaker's exit. The whole of the drama going on in uh, Ondo State at the moment, ahead of the elections. Okay, um, at the very top of the paper, we also have Edo 2020, why Ize Yamu will be elected governor by Obadan. And then we have Obasaki deserves re-election, says HOS. Um, I guess that's head of service, HOS. Um, governor will face defeat on September 19. The campaign is on and for yes, as it is. Um, a banker's 25 billion naira revival appeal for national theater, 10,000 jobs coming, uh, some cherry news uh, for now. I understand we have uh, Aisha back on the line. Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, I'm sorry about the earlier situation. We couldn't get your thoughts on the big one, on the punch, but we have another big one um, on the Nation newspaper. Um, the US and the UK say they are monitoring uh, Magus Probe. What's your take? Yes, I was. I think that was one of the first questions on, that I am afraid that there's a committee. Um, I'm not doubting the inspection led by Justice but I'm just wondering whether this is the case with prosecution. Why do we need a level of investigation for a which is which is what it should be? So um, the fact that the U.S. can monitor for me, is the more interesting Nigeria to think about what's going on and how the EFCC was formed in the early has really underperformed the culture of corruption 
in yeah, an instant has been or become a tool mostly for blackmail in the hands of women and has actually Aisha, um, I, I must just say thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, in spite of the challenges um, so we don't um, uh, keep straining uh, to hear you. Thank you so much. All right, uh, we'll come back to you, Laboras. Um, let's take yeah. uh, what's happening yeah. in Ondo State. Let's yeah. leave the U.S. and the U.K. and look at no, no, Ondo no, no, State. I, I will, um, um, for me, what's happening in Ondo State is a, a big moral body, a very massive one. Uh, because of politics. Um, um, this also had happened um, in the 1970, um, 1983 election between Omobori Owo and um, uh, Chief Michael Ajassin, then governor of Ondo State. Um, and it's also playing out again. What you see play out is ambition and then the need to remain in government. I had expected that uh, without prompting, the moment you, you, you leave a party, you hold a mandate in trust for the party. If you have misunderstandings and misgivings, you know, within the party, and then you decide to leave, you know, that um, you, it's a moral burden on you. Even, even though constitutionally, you are not, um, um, you can still hold on to the office being a joint ticket. But it's a moral burden to also show that you look, you you know, you you practice what you preach. I would have expected that um, the deputy governor, the moment you decamp from the party, you step aside. Considering the, 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 the banters and then the deprivation uh, that he's uh, currently going through, a situation where all your security details are you know, removed by the governor, uh, including your personal aids, all of them, you're, you're, you're almost standing alone. Mm, I would I expect think he has, that. He has had them restored. Oh, I, I, I do not. And then, you, because you are at the pleasure of Mr. President, of uh, the governor, who will d delegate responsibility to you, and and so for a governor that you are not, you don't share the same political platform with. How is he going to delegate responsibilities to you? So you become almost redundant, and and so I, I, I but here, he would also have his reasons because he would want to remain inside and play the politics of it. Um, he would want to consistently remain relevant in the scheme of things because the moment you resign, there's a belief that you know it will be difficult for you also to use you know the instrument of your office to actually you know get the ticket that you are hoping for in the primaries of the party that you have defected to. So, but all of this you know will play about quickly also on the issue. I, I shall raise the issue on um, you know transparency in, in and they're confronting Magu with allegations and normally the way the EFCC conduct their investigation once a petition is submitted that petition is actually investigated before the primary suspect is invited they would have concluded their investigation and gather all the evidence and so once the suspect is invited in this case, which is Magu, he's confronted with the petition and then asked to respond before questioning. That is the way they, they, they conduct their investigation and that's the global best practice. And then also I know the uh, international community will be interested because we are capital uh, um, a corruption country. And so there's tendency that, you know, this might naturally be a witch hunt. And then also so that the funds that is being alleged to have been looted will not be re-looted. You know, it's a situation of a looter continuum. All right, uh, let's see what we can do with uh, the Daily Trust newspaper. Again, we have Magu on the front page. No interest on funds in TSA, AGF is speaking. Um, keeping recovered loot in commercial banks illegal. That's uh, lawyers, that's it on your screen. You're also looking at anti-graft war may suffer setback. International groups are speaking up. Also on the front page, prices of food continue to soar despite lifting of interstate travel ban. Ten constituency awaiting INEC to file vacant seats. Regrouping Sokoto bandits forced thousands out of their communities. That's not so good. Um, we have other headlines as well. Uh, we have uh, something, the picture on the front page is uh, 48 displaced households recovered, receive I food items following uh, gov Governor Zulu's uh, humanitarian uh, intervention. I guess that's the picture on the front page. Um, three killed, two girls abducted in Katsina. Uh, current economic realities ne necessitated uh, Naira devaluation. Okay, um, 
let's look at the price of food. An interstate ban has been relaxed. We, we also know that even when there was interstate ban, there was still a set movement of uh, you know, essential items were excluded from that. So why is the prices of food escalating when there was no lockdown on the movement of people conveying these essential uh, commodities? Basic um, two reasons. Um, those people who are selling these foods also we need to buy other commodities and the prices of those other commodities you know are skyrocketing and that so if they decide to sell their food at the normal price they, it will be impossible for them to meet up with the current prices of other commodities and then as we speak now landlords are even increasing rent you begin to ask me what's the, the relationship between COVID and rent increase when people are losing their jobs. You know, so that's one reason. Then secondly, until we have a, a clear cut directive and plan on food security, you're going to have these fluctuations detected by you know um, um, uh, 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 the farmers. And because also you don't have because we don't have a clear cut directive, there are no storages. There are no marketing boards of takers to take off this. Go to my 12, sometimes you feel sorry for you know, the nature of our tomatoes and then nature of the market. So when you have all of this, and then the fact that COVID-19 is real, some people have heads of debts, they have to you know, mourn the debt of close relatives. Some of them also will not want to take the risk of you know having to embark on such journeys right. you know so when you put all of this in the midst what should happen is that government should have a clear cut directive on you know subsidizing farming and then not just subsidizing farming you also need to also have our off takers what's our plan on transporting you know some of these goods you go to just you have um a potato rotting away but bringing them to the areas where they are needed to cushion the shortfall it's a problem. All right, you let's go say, to I'm told we're out of time, is, um, but you, I would like your quick thoughts on the increasing cases of abduction, kidnapping across the country, even uh, in the midst of uh, the pandemic. Uh, we, we, in mean, a state of needs to be in done? a state of lawlessness, it becomes illegal to be law-abiding. We've had kidnapping since 1999. And it became so lucrative that government will pay ransom. And so when government pay, begins to pay ransom and tell you that ransom are not paid, when police, you know, people are abducted and police will tell you, just go negotiate, don't worry, we just negotiate with them. And there are no, no scientific method for actually, you know, um, arresting and uh, when we make one arrest, we you know, make so much noise about it. There are no scientific method for bringing this culprit to book. What you are indirectly telling people who are not into kidnapping is that it's lucrative and it pays. You know, so when, it, when that happened, you're going to have a, 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 an increase in, in, in this, you know. Quite unfortunate thing. reality. But let's be optimistic. Uh, the army says they're doing things about it. They have always been doing Fingers things about crossed. it. Thank you very much, uh, Barista Boris Oshoma, for coming on the program. Always my pleasure. Always my pleasure. And of course, thank you for watching. And that's how we wrap off the press this morning. Uh, please do your due diligence as well. Go read the papers and uh, add to what you've uh, heard today, informing your opinion. My name is Felicity Izewike. Thank you.